So this tub is something I and I'm crooked. Why is this? Okay. <sighs> Gosh, I don't usually film here, but here we are. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? Um, seriously, how are you? How is your life going? What's happening in your neck of the woods? What are you working on? I want to hear all those things. I don't usually film over here, so sorry if you see any craziness. I've told you guys before, I do a few dishes by hand over here. Um, that stuff that we're going to use today. And I leave John little messages on this little board. <laughs> We're in my kitchen, and today I am going to take you through the whole process. Actually, let me start over. Okay, months ago. Months? By the time you see this, it'll probably be months. Months ago, maybe early March, late February, I dyed some yarn, and then I knit a sweater for my granddog, Ava. It was adorable. Um, and her dad's made me a video of her unboxing it and trying it on so I am gonna show it to you because that inspired this project so please enjoy Ava she is the cutest and the sweater that I dyed and knit for her because nothing but the best for my grand dogs right Isn't she sweet? And that sweater turned out so good. And actually we were talking about it after and one of her daddies said, I love that sweater, it's so perfect. And I was like, it comes in a human pattern. <laughs> so who knows, maybe next year's Christmas card will be the whole family wearing botanical yoke sweaters, including Ava, but I don't know. But that color turned out so insanely gorgeous. I loved it. I love knitting with it. I am drawn to that color over and over. If you have seen what I'm currently working on, I'm actually knitting a scarf that's very similar, but not quite the same color. And I decided, you can probably hear my water heating up over here, sorry. I decided that I would make myself a sweater in the same colorway, and that meant I had to decide, you know how I am, like, okay, am I going to spin it? Am I going to just dye yarn? Am I going to, what am, how is this going to look? So what I finally decided is that I have a thin fleece out on the porch because when a raw fleece comes in, it gets quarantined on the porch until I finish washing it. And I was like, I bet I have just about enough to die card spin knit myself a sweater you know just like the usual couple weeks work whatever probably not so i came up here i i'll take you through the process but i came up and decided to go ahead and use that it is elsie may's fleece and you may have seen me unbox it last spring i think it might have been fall it came from jim Maryfield's farm 
those are beautiful fleeces and he is in our Facebook group. So if you're in our Facebook group and you wanna find him, he's in the group. So let's go through the washing process right now. Are you ready? I'm gonna weigh it, I'm gonna wash it, and then we're gonna dye some. Oh, also, you might be wondering, see this uh, furring strip along the wall? We are putting shelves here, and we I will be painting this backsplash. So you might be like, what is going on in your kitchen? Construction. And I'm just not gonna worry about making it look perfect because I know you guys are really here for the wool. You're not really here for decor. I'm not a DIY expert. Well, that's what those are for. Now, let's go mess around with some fleece. I've already weighed this out. I weighed out three pounds. And I am using these laundry bags from Dollar Tree. They're $1.25 a piece to wash them. And I usually tie a knot in the bottom just because otherwise the bag is so big. So you can see the bag looks kind of small. It's because there is a knot tied about halfway up the bag just to make it a better size to wash fleece in. These fleeces are generally very, very clean. Oh, just bumped the camera, nice. So what I usually do is I use the hottest water out of my tap. We have our um, hot water heater set up to the max. And then I just use blue Classic Dawn until I make the water light blue, you can see. This is my favorite 60 quart um, galvanized tub and I'll be washing in this. Um, I would say one of the most important things, and you can really see it here, is that you do not need to pack your fleece in tightly. And in fact, if you do pack it in tightly, you're going to have a hard time getting it clean. So be careful to just let it be loose in the bag. And on the first wash, you can just let it sink down on its own. I usually leave this here for 20 minutes and then come back and do the second wash. This is the second wash. The is exactly the same as the first, except you will have to push your fleece under for the second one. Now we're on to the rinsing. So I actually rinse all the soap out of my pan first. Uh, I just don't want to add soap while I'm rinsing. And then I do two as hot as possible rinses, usually um, 10 minutes a piece, because for rinsing, it does not need to soak as long. Okay, so that brings us to today. Yay! Um, the fleece is all washed. I'm gonna show you. This is the uh, the tub I wash it in. Let me get a bowl because I am also gonna dye fleece in this, and I've done it before. So we're gonna move this all into the bowl. Um, I did not weigh this. I literally just finished rinsing this and it's like none of it's completely dry. So we wouldn't get an accurate weight anyway. I did scrub this down before I put all the clean fleece in it because it has dirt and like a little bit of lanolin that just kind of sticks to it all the time because usually I only use it to wash. I've dyed in it a few times. We're gonna dye in it today. I'm gonna use the same color I used for Ava's sweater, which is just one color. I know, not usually me, but it turned out so insane. So it was Deep Orchid. I don't know if it'll focus or not. Let's do it. It's Deep Orchid by ProChem. Um, as a lot of you know, ProChem is my favorite brand of dye. No, they don't work with me. I wish they would, but they probably don't even know I exist. Most people don't even know I exist. I'm not that technical and I really don't even like stuff that's super technical as you guys have seen and heard and know. I truly believe and this, if you've ever read The Alchemist, you might agree with me, you might not though, that the best way to learn is by doing it and if you are scared of messing up, you have something like going on even deeper than that. You should not avoid messing up in order to coddle that feeling along because that feeling holds you back. 
if that makes sense. I don't know, does it better to look inside yourself and say like, okay, we need to talk a little deeper about this. What's really gonna happen if I mess up? A little bit of wool gets used. The sheep are making it all the time. They're literally growing places all over the world right now for you to use and maybe mess up and it's fine. Do, your, do you, like there's nothing wrong with it, but that feeling is holding you back and it is worth digging into yourself to say, why do I feel like I can't make a mistake? Why do I feel like I failed if it doesn't come out exactly the way that I envisioned it before I started? You know, it's a big question, it's a lot. We're not here to do therapy. I'm just saying, ask yourself the question. I still have to do it all the time. I hate that, but it happens. One of the things I'm gonna have to do is make sure that there is vinegar in this water because I did not, vinegar or citric acid, we need some kind of acid to fix this dye because this is an acid dye. Normally, when I start with dry fiber, I will soak it for a while before I, in citric acid, usually mixed with water, before I start dyeing. But I did not do that with this because it's literally just been washed. So I'm gonna put some in the water and then I'm actually gonna add it to my dye this time as well. And I'll show you how I do it. This fleece is multiple colors. Some of it's really wet. <laughs> this fleece has multiple colors. So there's white and then there's also this really pretty charcoal. I want that this time because I wanna have like all the colors of Heather and I'm gonna blend it, I'm gonna dye it pretty intensely and then I'm gonna blend all of it. So we'll get a really pretty heathered look out of it because there will be all tones of the same color blended in together and I'm really excited about this. I have done it before. There is a sweater. Oh, sorry, there's yarn. I haven't knit this sweater yet. If you go back far enough where I dyed it like inspired by a sweater I knit one of my friends that was like green, greens, blues, and yellows. And I purposely did that so that when I blended it all, it was this really pretty like heather evergreen. It's gorgeous. I don't know why I haven't knit that sweater yet. I just don't have time, right? <sighs> it's time to go. So I'm gonna fill this with hot water. I'm gonna point you guys down and I'm gonna wear my mask. So I will talk over everything else. Always wear your protective gear. Always, always, always. So I'm gonna go get mine. This is what I store my citric acid in, so I'm gonna add it to my water. Okay, so I know for sure that I have less than three pounds of fleece, and they say one tablespoon per pound. I am gonna do, um, I think I'm gonna do four. I have found that it's not always enough. Okay, so that's four tablespoons, and I'm gonna put this with the dye. And I'm gonna take my tongs, this is my dyeing tongs, and I'm just gonna mix it in. Okay, so let's mix dye. For what I think is gonna be two and a half pounds of fleece, I am gonna use six teaspoons of dye. But first, I'm gonna put one teaspoon each of citric acid in these cups. I'm gonna put on my mask. So I really wanted a saturated color. I put three teaspoons of dye in each of these cups. I add a little bit of water that just boiled in my kettle and then I'm actually going to add cold to this afterwards so that I'm not adding super hot boiling dye to my fleece or my water. Now you're going to see why I did it in two cups. You could do this in one big cup. I'm going to add one of these completely to the dye bath. Time to put on a glove.
This water is lukewarm at best, so I did move it around with my tongs a bit to make sure it was all getting exposed to dye. And now I'm pouring in my second cup of dye on the top. That's really just because a lot of this wool is not going to sit under the dye, so I wanted to have a lot of dye right on the top. I guess what I will do is come back and gently do some flipping around, but I'm, I am liking this color so far. I'm concerned it may not be enough, but I can always add dye later. So we're gonna let it start to heat up here. I have it on the middle burner, which is a huge burner on simmer. Oh, sorry, for now I have it between low and simmer. And I'm gonna let this heat up and then I'm gonna like take some out and take a look at it and see how, how it's looking after a bit. There's actually like some foam from the dye. I had foam on it while I was mixing it. You probably saw that may be kind of convincing me, I guess, that the color's lighter than it actually is. So we're gonna let this go for a while and then we'll be back and we'll check it out. I'm gonna let it go for like 20 minutes. in 20. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I've been watching a guy make butter on TikTok because I like to do productive things with my time. <laughs> We're going to check how this is doing. Oh. Try not to destroy my kitchen. Where is my tongs? I'm going to lift some of this out. I do think I got enough color. Um, I'm really happy with that, actually. Look how gorgeous. Looks like a scary witch's brew. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because, and we've talked about this before, this dye broke a bit. I don't mind when I'm gonna make a heather anyway, but can you see, yes you can, that what's left in here is like the pink and there, you okay bud? <laughs> Luther just scared himself and went running downstairs. And so the purple struck and there's still pink left in here. See that? It's a different color. So, hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and give this about 20 more minutes. Mm, yeah, probably 20 more minutes. And the reason I'm doing that is because the... Um, this pan took a long time to get heated up because there is so much water in here. Raise the temp a bit and I'm gonna leave it like 15 to 20 more minutes. I'm dying this pan by the way too, which is fun. Uh, and go ahead and check it back. So I'm gonna turn the heat a little cause you can see it's steaming, but it's definitely not even at a simmer. It could get hotter. So I'm gonna turn it up a little and then I'm gonna put the lids back on. I'll be back in another 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes at a higher temp. So let's check it out. It definitely absorbed a lot more. See how light that is? All right, I'm gonna turn it up a tiny skosh more because it's still not simmering. And then I am gonna give it 15 more minutes and then no matter what it's done after 15 minutes, I'm gonna turn off the heat and let it come down to room temperature because I think it'll absorb the rest. So I'm gonna do 15 more minutes and then that'll be it. Okay, John has gone on a trip, a fishing trip. And I'm gonna dump this now. Oh wait, let me show you what it looks like, hang on. So there is light reflecting off of it. Um, it's actually really, really come out dark and kind of a gorgeous, grapey purple. I don't know how to explain it. And also, I was gonna show you the water. 
I have talked about this before, some colors just take a lot of time and some take a lot of heat. I left this to soak for a while so that it would take up all the what was left of the pink in here and we definitely succeeded. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in my homemade giant calendar. You've seen it before. I had originally intended to do this outside but I woke up and it's below freezing and I don't wanna wait for it to warm up. So it's gonna be kinda of slow and this thing weighs a ton. Look at how like purpley, I don't know how to even, what, how do you describe this color? It's purple, but it's also kind of like a whiny purple. It's a whiny, <laughs> whiny purple. So I'm gonna let this drain for a while because what will happen is, and it takes a while, is the water from the top hairs will sort of run down slowly and drain out over time because then I will wrap it in a couple of my dye towels, roll it up, squeeze the water out of it somewhat, and then I'll lay it all out to dry. All right, so here we go. Look at it. It's so good. It's all dry. I just brought it in. It was um, outside on the deck on this sweater drying rack. It's looking so, so good. So I'm going to start carding it. I'm going to use my Strouch carter. So this pass will take the longest because um, it has to be picked. Look at this came off my deck. These come out of the trees here. <laughs> so annoying. Okay, so let's go. While I pick, I try to make sure that I pick very, very loosely and remove any shortcuts I find. I'm super picky about my picking process. I think it just makes the whole thing better if you pick the fleece really carefully. Okay, this looks super crazy, but it's the first time through. I don't know how the color is gonna show up because it is so vibrant and so gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to run all of this through once and then split these up so that they'll be really well blended. So first one, first time through, you can tell it's only the first time through. There's still some spots that need to get pulled apart and further combing or cardings, but they, it'll get really smooth and it'll look so good. At this stage, this is what it should look like. <laughs> Okay, so this is one time through. I know how it looks, but let me tell you, it looks kind of wild and crazy, right? Like it might be kind of hard to spin. Personally, I would probably not spin this. I don't like it through just one time, but this is the same fleece. I did a video, gosh, I don't know, a few months back where I washed some of a fin fleece and I tried three different ways to spin it. I combed some, I carded some, and I think I did some from the cloud or maybe I flicked it. I can't remember. But, um, or maybe I did four ways. Whatever. You can go back and see it. In fact, I'll link it. This is the same fleece and when I ran it through my carter twice, it was perfectly wonderful to spin. Okay, also, I really thought I was gonna have to run it through three times to make the blend, um, I mean, it's never gonna be exactly homogenous, but to blend the colors better. But I'm looking at this pile of um, baths and I'm feeling really okay about how the colors are dispersed, if not fully blended, if that makes sense. I do think they need one more time through. It's not for the color blending, it's because most fleeces can't just be carded once and then spun smoothly. And I do want a pretty smooth yarn. So. I'm gonna run these through one more time. I am gonna break them apart. So the way that I do that is I ended up with, I think it was 10 bats actually. I thought it was eight. I counted and then it ended up being 10. So I'll take a small piece from each bat, spread it out flat on the carter, let it go through, and then that will help me get the colors blended like to one more level. Even though I'm really okay with the colors, it's the, just that the, the fibers need a little more um, organization is the wrong, like breaking up and I don't know. They need one more carding. <laughs> I'm gonna run them through on the Strouch one more time 
and then we're gonna start spinning. I am only gonna spin a sample for this video because it's gonna take me a while to spin a whole sweater, but um, I definitely wanna make sure there's a sample for the video. So let's go ahead and run these through one more time. Okay, so today uh, I thought about this and I literally woke up this morning thinking you really need to test the ply, the two and a three ply to see what kind of yarn I like better for my sweater. I have not picked out a pattern, so it doesn't matter to me what the weight of the final yarn is. I just wanted to, I don't know, be what I like. So I'm gonna test both. For just a few yards, I'm gonna do the turkey hand ply and then I'm gonna switch to a chain ply. It's gonna give me close enough to a true three ply that I'll know if I like that better or if I don't. So I've wound my hand up for my turkey hand gonna get it started and I'm actually gonna knit a tiny swatch with each of these two so that I can kind of tell how I like them. Okay so I've got my little loop at the end of my turkey hand. I'm gonna start a, a chain ply with this I'm gonna show you how to do it. You just take, oh goodness, where's the end? Here we go, okay. You just take the end and you wanna like make a loop with that basically. So I'm gonna put the end of my loop through, okay, with still a little bit of tail sticking out. And then I start using my loop for my chain ply, so. It's ready, it's ready to go. Like it's that easy to do. If you end with a little loop, it's just so simple. Um, I also have a tutorial on chain plying. I will link that too. So for the two ply, I chose a size four needle. I mean, it's really just an educated guess because I kind of know, you know, I've knitted and spun a lot of sweaters. And then for the three ply, I chose a size six needle. It's gonna be quite a small swatch. This is all I sampled.
So I'll tell you, I did not expect to like them both this much. I thought there would be like a really clear standout winner. I have to say that the color, I just can't get over how great it, it turned out, how close it was to what I wanted, how much I love it. So that's kind of amazing. And they don't look that different, but they feel a lot different. Um, so I would say I really like both of these a lot, but I think I'm going to like the two ply better. They're both very springy. They're both, they have a lot of memory, which is nice. I think I'm going to like the two ply better because it is not as heavy. This feels like it would be really, really warm and I wouldn't be able to wear it as much. So if I um, knit this with a finer gauge, I think the two ply is going to be just perfect for me. for layering and I can wear it a lot more. It's actually also a bit softer than I thought it was going to be, so I'm thrilled. Look how cool it is. Alright, I gotta go. I gotta get spinning. Now we know what we're looking for. I'm looking for a sport weight sweater and I cannot wait. <laughs> so next Sunday of the 9th, I believe it is, I will not be live because I'll be driving back from Maryland Chicken Hill. If you see me on Saturday, please say hi. And um, I will see you guys next week with a video on Maryland Chicken Hill, I kind of assume. Have a wonderful week. I am thrilled with how this is going so far, and I will see you soon. Thanks. I love you. Bye.